to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel the of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of and Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The Lord said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 following. We welcome you today to our study of Passion for Bible Study. I want to think today about how wonderful it is to study the Bible and why Christians ought to study that to have a closer relationship with Almighty God. We hope you'll get your Bible handy as we're going to study this great subject together. Throughout the Bible, there are great examples of people who were passionate about a study of the Scriptures. One of the best examples is that of Hilkiah the scribe and Shaphan and Josiah the king. For a long time, the Word of God had been missing, hadn't been a part of Israel's life. And then in 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 8 through 11, they find the Word of God. And he says, I found the book of the law of the Lord in the temple, and from the king down, they read it, they changed their hearts and lives, and they got right in the sight of God. But with those words, I have found the book of the law of the Lord. Can't you hear the passion? Can't you see how excited those people are for studying the Word of God. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine living in a land where you couldn't access the Bible very well? Can you imagine living somewhere where every home didn't have a copy of the Bible? Where maybe the Bible wasn't as readily available? Imagine how excited we'd be if we didn't have access to it and we found the Word of God. And yet the Word of God is likely in every one of our homes? And do we have that same passion for Bible study? You know, another great example of someone who was passionate about God's Word and Bible study is that of Job. Job said these words in Job 23 verse 12, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. He said of God, Your word is more important than my necessary food. Now, how passionate was Job about Bible study and the Word of God? Think about it this way. Job said, the Bible is more necessary, more important than our necessary food. What happens if you don't eat? Well, if you don't eat, you eventually die. The body can't live without food. You've got to have uh, food taken in, calories taken in. You've got to have energy. Job said God's Word is more important than our necessary food. It's necessary even on a higher level spiritually. You know, another great example is that of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 15, Your words were found, and I did eat them, and they were to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. How did Jeremiah feel about it? God's word was something he found, and it was a great joy and something that caused rejoicing in his life. But then probably one of the clearest examples is that of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 2. Jesus is found in the temple and He's sitting there listening to the scribes. He's, he's asking questions and He is very concerned about God and His Word. Now friend, let's think about our own lives now. These are examples of great men of the Bible who were passionate about God's Word. What about us? Do we have that passion, that zeal, that excitement and joy for studying the Word of God as we ought to. Let's think about why we ought to do that today. Why is it that every child of God, every person, needs to study the Scriptures? Why do we need to have a passion for Bible study? Well, friend, I can't be approved. I can't be approved in the sight of God without having Bible study is a part of my life. Listen to the words of Paul in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. The Bible says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How do I know I'm right with God? 
how do I know that I'm doing what God wants me to? How do I know that I'm living right? How do I know that I have obeyed the gospel? How do I know that I'm following the truth? Study to show yourself approved unto God. We study so that we can know the word from God's very mouth. We study to know how we ought to live, what God's plan of salvation is. And friend, that ought to give us a great sense of confidence when we do that. John said in 1 John 5 verses 13 through 16, These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. And so we want to, as a newborn babe, we want to desire the pure milk of the word that we may grow thereby. 1 Peter 2 verse 2. As Peter later said, we want to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Jesus himself said, if you love me, keep my commandments. But how do I know I love God? How do I know his commandments and know that I love him if I don't study his word? And so let's not be like those people. In Hosea 4 verse 6, who were destroyed for a lack of knowledge, let's be good students. Let's be passionate. Friend, think about it this way. Let's see the Word of God as it is. Do we realize that, do we realize that, that this book, the Bible, is the very Word off the mouth of God who created me, who one day I'm going to stand before as judge, and who one day we have the hope of living with forever? That's what the Bible is. Every scripture, all scripture is God-breathed and profitable. 2 Timothy 3.16. And so this is the very word from the mouth of God. But friend, we also need to study the Bible because of the mass amount of religious confusion in our world today. Would you say that we've got a lot of confusion in the world today? Wouldn't you say there's a lot of people teaching a lot of different things about Christ, about salvation, about how to live, about moral things? Well, how can I know what's right and wrong? Jesus said, you can know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 8, verse 32. Jesus also said, God's Word is truth. John 17, verse number 17. The Bible says, do not be ignorant, but understand. The will of the Lord. How do we do that? By going to the Bible to let it answer man's questions. Jeremiah 37 verse 17, a wonderful question is asked there. Is there any word from the Lord? Paul would later say in Romans 4 verse 3, what does the scripture say? Friend, with all the confusion about salvation, all the confusion about uh, the church, all the confusion today that exists over moral ideas? Let's go to the Bible and let's ask, is there any word from God on this subject? But what does the Scripture say? That's the only way to really deal with the mass confusion that exists. Ephesians 3 verse 4 promises this. When you read, Paul said, you can understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. We can know God's will and we can understand, but because of all the confusion, it's necessary that we don't just believe. Okay, somebody says, well, this is what the Bible teaches and this is what you need to believe. Another person over here says, well, no, the Bible teaches this and this is what you need to believe. How do I determine what I need to believe? I don't listen to this person and I don't necessarily listen to this person. I listen to this book. I read for myself. I study for myself. I see what the Bible says, and I believe and do what it says because God said so, not because of man. Friend, we also need to study the Scriptures to make sure that we're right in the sight of God. I want you to look at this passage with me in Acts chapter 17, and this emphasizes the personal responsibility of studying the Scripture to make sure that I'm right, that I'm in a right spiritual condition with Almighty God. Acts chapter 17, I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse number 11. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the Word with all readiness and searched the Scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. The Apostle Paul comes to the region of Berea. He takes the gospel to these people. They open the door. Paul's there and they, they don't shut the door in his face, but they receive that with readiness of mind. They're ready to listen to Paul. 
They sit down. Paul tells them about the gospel, about Jesus, about the prophecies, about the scriptures that prove that. And what do they do? They search the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Friend, just listen very carefully. Just because somebody tells you this is what you need to do to be saved, or just because you've heard all your life this is what you need to do to be saved, don't believe it for those reasons. That's why God gave us the Bible. We need to study for ourselves to make sure we're right with God. Listen very carefully. There have been millions of people who have been taught ways of error about salvation. I'll give you one example. Oftentimes people are told, to be saved, here's what you need to do. You need to say the sinner's prayer. And they'll say something, some prayer like this, Dear Jesus, I recognize you as Savior. I ask you to come to my life and heart and save me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friend, here's what's interesting about that. You can study your own Bible from Genesis 1 verse 1 to Revelation 22, 21. You don't find the sinner's prayer one time. What? So many people have been told that's what they need to do to be saved and that's not even in the Bible one time? Friend, that's exactly right. Search it for yourself and see. But what does that illustrate? There are people teaching false ways of salvation. There's a whole multitude following that to the road that leads to destruction. And friend, I need to study my Bible myself to make sure that I'm right in the sight of God. Isn't that what Timothy says? Study, Paul said to Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. But then we also illustrate the idea this way. Why do I need to study my Bible? I need to study so that I can answer the skeptic and teach the lost. Peter says this. 1 Peter 3 verse 15 says, Be ready always to give an answer to anyone ask of you for the reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. I need to study to be able to give an answer to who? The skeptic who says there is no God. The skeptic who says Christ is not real. Someone who says how can we trust the Bible? I need to study to say okay here's the evidence. Here's what the scripture says. Here's the proof of these things but also to teach the lost. I want to give an answer of the hope that is within me. Why do we live with hope? Why are we Christians as happy, happy all the time? Why do we have the joy that passes and the peace that passes all understanding? What is it that makes Christians unique? I need to be able to share that hope, the good news of Jesus, that He gives meaning, that He gives purpose, that He gives us freedom from sin and that joy that surpasses all understanding is a part of the Christian life. You see, Jesus asked of me and you that we go into all nations, that we go into all the world, and that we preach the gospel in every creature. Matthew 28 verse 18, Mark chapter 16 verse 15. Those who have been called out of darkness have been called to proclaim the praises of us who called or called out of darkness. God has called me and you as Christians to study the Word of God so that we can share with others that great message. But friend, there's another practical reason as to why we need to be passionate about Bible study, and it's this. We need to be good students and passionate about Bible study so that we can avoid sin in our life. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus is going to be tempted by Satan. And Satan pretty much throws the whole gambit at him. He throws everything he can at Satan, at Jesus. Um, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. He tries every way possible. And at one point, he knows Jesus is hungry. He knows that he's been without food, been in the wilderness 40 days, that he's hungry. And so he says to Jesus, hey, if you're the Son of God, prove it. Turn these stones to bread. How did Jesus deal with that temptation? Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The three ways Satan tempted Jesus. How did he overcome those? Every time he said this, It is written, it is written, it is written. Jesus saw the value and was passionate about Bible study because that was a way to avoid sin in his life. Listen to Psalm 119 verse 11. The psalmist said it so beautifully. Your word I've hidden in my heart. Why? That I may not sin against you. 
Friend, there's a multitude of people going down the path to destruction. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Satan is going to do his best to get us to live wrong and do wrong. It was said to Cain, who murdered his brother Abel in Genesis 4, verse 7. Sin lies at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. How do you master and overcome sin? Through the Word of God. Proverbs 13, verse 15, the Bible clearly teaches the, the way of the transgressor. It's a hard way to live, but we can know what's right and we can do what's right. And according to the Scripture, we can overcome sin and be victorious in the end. And so why study the Bible? Friend, as you're living your life, when Satan throws something at you, when we have to deal with whatever it is, anger, when we're tempted to give in to some sin, when something is coming into our life, you know, if I've got the Bible as part of my repertoire, if the Bible is a good working knowledge in my life, when that temptation arises, you know what also arises? Those Bible passages, those Bible verses, those scriptures that ought to come flooding to my mind and the principles of God ought to be a part of my life. And so here you've got Satan. He's tempting us. He's throwing things at us. What kind of defense do I have to that? When those temptations arise, those Bible verses, those Bible passages, those principles ought to rise up with it and ultimately combat that temptation and help us if we're willing to overcome it. Now, friend, as we think about having a passion for Bible study, we also want to emphasize today the type of, of attitude, the type of mindset, the type of heart that a person ought to have that would promote good, passionate Bible study in their life. What, is, what kind of attitude and what kind of mindset do I need to have to really have good Bible study? Well, first, I need to have a belief, a, a conviction in the divine inspiration of the Bible. What is it that will promote me to really be a good student of the Bible? Friend, if I'm convinced 100% of my heart that this is God speaking to man, that this is God's Word and that it applies to my life today. Friend, that's going to make me sit up and listen up. Psalm 119, 160, the entirety of God's Word is truth. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Timothy 3, 16, holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. This book is God's truth. This book, God breathed out for me and you. When Paul or Peter or some Bible writer picked up pen, it was the Holy Spirit of God that was the driving force behind that. It's as David said. I love these words in 2 Samuel 23, 2. David said, His word, God's word, was on my tongue. That's the way we approach the Bible. John 16, 13, Jesus made the promise to His apostles that the Holy Spirit would come and He would guide them into all truth. Friend, that did happen. As Jude 3 verse says, we have everything we need for life and godliness. 2 Peter 1 verse 3, and that once for all delivered faith is available for man today. And friend, here's where this becomes so practical. Listen very carefully. When I approach this book as the Word of God, friend, I realize its relevance to my life and to yours. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 says this, as His divine power has given to us all things for life and godliness. A belief that this is God's Word and a belief that this has everything I need to live the best life and to be like God. Friend, that type of attitude will promote good Bible study in every person's life. Secondly, we mentioned that the type of attitude a person needs to really have passionate Bible study is a good respect for the authority of the Scriptures, the absolute authority of God's Word. What do we mean? John 2 verse 5 sets kind of the motto for every Christian. Jesus has been, uh, his mother, Jesus has, uh, his mother has requested that he fill the water pots to wine in John chapter 2. Uh, somehow she recognizes that he is going to do that. And Mary turns to the servants who are about to fill those water pots up and she says these words, Whatever 
He says to you, do it. Friend, that's what we're talking about. Whatever Jesus says, I want to have the mindset that I'm going to do it. I want to realize all authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and on earth. I want to realize that Colossians 3.17 says, Whatever the Christian does in word or in deed, they're to do all in the name of or by the authority of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And friend, to, to, to motivate me to really have passion for Bible study, I need the attitude and I need to, to realize on the day of judgment, this is going to be our judge. John 12, verse 48, Jesus said, He who rejects me does not receive my word, has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. And so this is God's word. This is going to be our judge. We live by it. It's our authority. And we must not go beyond the authority of God's divine word. Then a third mindset or attitude that will really promote good Bible study is an attitude of utmost submissiveness and humility. Let me give you the example. First Samuel chapter 3. And I want to read these words to you. The context is Samuel is being called by God. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3, he's been called multiple times. And so he's being called by God. And I want you to notice what is said by the old man there who encourages Samuel in the right way. 1 Samuel chapter 3, as we think about God's message to him, here's what the Bible says in verse number 10. What wonderful encouragement this gives us. Or 1 Samuel 3, the Bible says these words. Eli says in verse 9, Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if God calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Now you listen to this attitude. And Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. That's the attitude that we need to promote good Bible study, an attitude of humility and an attitude of submissiveness. Uh, Luke chapter 14, verse number 11, whoever humbles himself will be exalted. He who exalts himself, he'll be humbled. Let's not have a high and holy attitude or a, a better than thou mindset. Remember, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. I want that attitude of Isaiah. Here am I, send me. Isaiah chapter 6. I want that attitude of, of, of Samuel. Speak, Lord, your servant hears. That's the humility that will really make us serve God to the best of our ability. Now, friend, we also want to have this mindset to have good Bible study and to really have a passion about it. I need an overriding desire more than anything else in my life to go to heaven. Do you really want to go to heaven above all else? Listen to what Paul said again. For to me, to live is Christ. To die, that's a gain. Paul saw going to heaven as the ultimate gain, as the ultimate goal. Uh, the psalmist said in Psalm 116, verse 15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Revelation 14, verse 13. Do, do, do we really have that desire? to go and be with Jesus. Jesus said, I go to prayer place for you. If I go, I'll come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Don't you want to go to that place that Jesus describes as a place of rest? Hebrews chapter 4. As a place of being with God forever. Matthew 6 verse 9. As a place where all the saints of old are going to be. Friend, if so, I've got to have in this life a passion for Bible study. And so let's again make it practical. Let's think about our own life. I ask myself, as you ask yourself, are we really studying the Scriptures like we ought to? Are we really, really passionate about the Word of God? Do we really believe that this book is from the mouth of God? Do we really, are we convicted that this will save us from the devil and his temptation, that the Word of God is living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, Hebrews 4, 4, verse 12, that if we receive with meekness the implanted Word, it'll save our soul, James 1, verse 21. If so, then, friend, we need to be willing, first of all, to obey the gospel. 
Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? John 8, verse 24. Would you be willing to repent of sin in your life? Acts 3, verse 19. Would you acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of the world? Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. And would you do what Jesus said to be saved? He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Mark 16, 16. Maybe as a child of God, you've not been studying the Scriptures. We hope the encouragement that all of us have received today from the Word of God will encourage us and will motivate us to really put our heart and life into studying the Gospel of Christ, which is able to save us from sin. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.